Nick Davey and I'm uh, AOC's uh, Higher Education Policy Manager, um, which uh, involves a range of roles, working with agencies, working in the HE sector um, and managing uh, all our regional networks of college higher education. And can we talk about HE in FE? Yeah. Um, we're actually beginning to, to use the term college higher education uh, because we've never been too happy with uh, higher education in, in further education. We think it doesn't quite reflect what we actually do. Um, and I think uh, that's been accepted by a lot of agencies now. The Quality Assurance Agency are now using the, cert, the same term, college higher education. Uh, but, it, but in terms of the, the future of college higher education, I, I think it uh, needs to be contextualised really in how we see the future of higher education generally. Um, college higher education will, al will always be a minority sport within higher education. Um, universities will always uh, offer most of the higher education, not just in this country but uh, across the world. But what we're finding um, from governments, employers and to some extent employees um, is a demand for higher education but in different forms, different places and different types than what we might call the historically traditional model of the three-year honours degree. And of course in England that has tended to mean the three-year residential honours degree. Um, and of course that has real strengths. Uh, and if you're probably interested in doing uh, a three-year degree in one subject, that you're particularly interested in literature, poetry, history, psychology, then it would be appropriate probably to do that at the university. Um, but if you are in the workplace, uh, if you don't particularly find it easy to learn academic study, um, if you possibly haven't done that well at uh, level two or three, uh, if you find yourself uh, in the workplace and you've been promoted and you're not quite sure about your skill set, or if you're someone who wants to be promoted, um, what's available for those groups? Um, the system we have is fine for the 18-year-old, uh, going through U doing their A-levels, going through UCAS, going on to university, Hall of Residence, student experience and all those kinds of things. A lot of people, both actually young people, don't always want that. Um, certainly employers find it very expensive. Governments find it very expensive. Um, and I think there are issues about is it right for a lot of people who go into that particular type of higher education? I mean, there's quite a lot of evidence that it's not appropriate for many of them and they should be doing a different form of higher education, more practical, more applied, more learning from practice and then learning the th theory through that process rather than looking at the theory and abstract thought. Um, I think employers uh, increasingly see the need to upskill their workforce um, and they want to do that as efficiently as they can. We need to capture learning in the workplace much better. So, I think a whole range of issues, really, um, means that we are going, going forward, we're going to need a different type of higher education system than we did, say, in 1995. Uh, and college higher education, which I think it's fair to say uh, is special, specialist in vocational higher education, higher education for the, work, work, um, for the workplace uh, is possibly uh, can meet some of those demands, not all of them. Universities obviously can, um, but I think that we could have a bigger role than possibly we have done in the last 20 years. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we've, all, we always, we've always had vocational higher education and I mean, there are some areas uh, which are, I mean, things like uh, actually medicine, training to be an architect are, are actually quite quite vocational. Um, I, I think what the, the problem is, is I think a lot of policy makers uh, t t tend to see the world through their experience of education, um, which for almost all politicians means A-levels and uh, a university education, often at a fairly prestigious university. Um, m most people are, are probably not going to do that for, for all kinds of reasons. Um, and as, I, as I've said previously, uh, a lot of people find it quite difficult to study uh, using traditional academic disciplines um, but at the same time um, are very interested in developing higher skills. 
Um, so I think what the college sector brings to the table, what it's good at, historically has been good at, is being often close to local region employers, is having a real understanding of the skills needs of those local employers, of often recruiting staff yeah, locally who come with those kind of higher vocational and professional skills. So you, know, you won't get many staff in the college sector with PhDs, but you would get a lot of staff who are very experienced in the profession uh, and are often leaders in that profession as well, in their professional associations. Um, and I, you know, I, I don't see the need often for people to study for three years full time. Uh, often it could be done in an accelerated fashion, which a lot of universities are resistant to because they have their own business models which are based on three years. Um, also, we're not very good, and I think this is across the sector, both uh, us and the universities, of capturing learning in the workplace. Um, and I don't think we are good enough, really, at putting on flexible provision. There's all the evidence is, particularly those in the workplace, and there's six million people who have level, level three qualifications and who could easily access higher education. All their messages are they want it in the evening, they want it uh, at the weekend, or they want it online. Uh, and we need to develop all those modes of attendance as well.